All right, everybody, welcome back. Um, I have rolled out some cookie dough and started cutting them just like I did before. I kept going and kept going and kept going. So I've taken 20 of them um, on my cookie sheet here. You can do less on your cookie sheet. You don't have to do 20. I did five rows of four, um, but they do rise a little bit and puff up. So if you want to just start with um, maybe just a dozen or something like that, you can definitely do that. Depending on what size your cookie sheet is, this is a pretty good size cookie sheet, so I'm not too afraid there. So I've gone ahead and cut out 20 bottoms and 20 tops, okay, of my dough mix so far. So I'm going to take a half a teaspoon measuring, uh, a measuring teaspoon, because I find that um, if I start doing it with a regular teaspoon, sometimes I get too little and too much. So I usually do try to measure this, um, and I'm gonna go ahead and take the homemade jam that I made yesterday, and I'm simply gonna take the half a teaspoon, and I'm just gonna drop it right in the center of each of the pieces of the bottom of the cookie, okay? So, like I said, if, if you don't wanna use a measuring teaspoon, that's fine. Just try to stay consistent in your spooning um, of the jam, because what you don't want is you don't want a bunch of it coming out over the sides. Now, sometimes it does, <laughs> it does leak out a little bit um, on some of them and some of them it doesn't so um, and sometimes with the, especially with the homemade jam you're gonna get um, pieces of the fruit in there as well so some of them might be a little bit bigger than the other ones but overall they're pretty consistent or I found it's pretty consistent now you want to make sure that you try to drop that right in the center of the cookie um, if you go off a little bit to the side, sometimes you can correct it when you lay that top layer on. But if you go off to the center too much, it's definitely going to leak out over the sides and you don't want that. So I've got just a few left here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to um, go ahead and add the tops to this. Now, I have a little dish of water off to the side and that's going to help me kind of seal the tops and the bottoms together. Now you could use a little... You could use a fork and you could crimp the edges if you wanted a, like a little pastry look or something like that. But what I do is, you'll be able to see it in just a second, um, there's my last one, is I take just a little bit of uh, water in a dish, cold water or tap water, doesn't matter, and I just kind of dab my finger in and I just kind of go around the edges of each cookie. Not, I mean, you don't have to spend a ton of time. What this does is this on the edges just moistens up that corner, especially if they've been sitting for any length of time, sometimes they'll start to crust a little bit. This just kind of moistens it back up so that when you put the tops on, this will seal it really well and you won't have big gaps in your cookies, okay? So that's kind of important. <laughs> you don't want like big gaps where that jam can leak out. Now you can try all kinds of different fillings with this if you want to. You can put dates um, in the middle. Sometimes my Nana would put like a date mixture with some crushed up dates and sugar and that was really, really good. She made some great date bars too that um, I may do later this year. Those were, I really liked those a lot. Um, had a nice little crumble mixture on the top. It was really good. I'm sure a lot of you have already have had those. So, okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put the tops onto the cookies. So I'm gonna go ahead and just lay them over the top, each one. I'm not gonna really press down on them too much right now, okay? I'm just gonna lay them on there. Now what I did when I, um, when I was cutting these cookies is after I cut them, when I laid them on the counter, I flipped them over so that the counter side is up and the rolled side is down. Um, why I do that is A, because the, if there's any leftover flour, it kind of goes in the middle and of the cookie and it kind of helps to stabilize the jam so that the jam isn't like gushing out everywhere. And also it makes a nice smooth surface for the top of your cookie, okay? So that way the cookie, um, the cookie bottoms are actually the cookie tops, if that makes any sense to you. Um, it just smooths them out and makes them look nice on the top as far as presentation goes. All right, so the last couple are left. This one's broken a little bit. See how this one's broken? All I'm gonna do is kind of piece that back together. And actually, if you just crumple it up like this, you can make a whole new top if you want to. So um, I kind of left that one. I really, I didn't redo it because I wanted you to see. 
if you just push it down with your hand and just kind of form it. You can take your cookie cutter back out and, um, and make a nice crisp top if you want, but that's all gonna get pushed together and you're not gonna be able to see it. So if you have one that breaks, it's totally fine, okay? Now, now that those are all laid on top, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go around the very edges with my fingers, like the very edge, okay? Kind of down off to the side, so to speak. And I'm just gonna go around and push these two together. Now I'm not really using a ton of force, but you'll be able to feel the two pieces of cookie come together. All right, so I'm kind of pressing that top layer down into the bottom layer, just around the edges. You're gonna uh, totally avoid the center of this cookie, folks, okay? Because what you wanna do, um, by do, I'm sorry, but by doing this, it's going to A, you're not gonna push the jelly out accidentally, okay? And B, it's gonna create a little bit of an air pocket for that jam to expand and to grow within the center of the cookie. All right, we are all set to go now. Preheated my oven 350 degrees. These are gonna go in there for between, I would say around 12 minutes you wanna check them, okay? Just so the edges are starting to brown and the top might have a little bit of a brown fleckle on the top. But um, check them at 12, check them at 10 if you have a convection oven. And these can go anywhere from 10 minutes on the early side to 15 minutes, okay? So bake them at 350. We're gonna go ahead and bake these off. I'm gonna bake the rest of them off too. Um, and then when we come back, you'll see the end results and we're gonna break one open so you can see the inside. So hang on just a sec, we'll be right back. All right, everybody, we're back. I have the last of the cookies out and I'm just gonna dish them onto my cooling rack here. Now they have a nice, like, crispy outside because of the Crisco just combined everything together and it just, it makes a nice, it's a cross half between a sugar cookie and a shortbread cookie. And that's why having the jam in the middle is just perfect. So each of these cookies, um, each cookie sheet baked about between around 13 minutes or so in my oven. Um, I have a convection um, switch on my oven that I turn on and it just um, creates that airflow for a nice convection cook. Um, but if you have a regular oven, like I said, check it at the 12 minute mark because some ovens do cook hotter than others. Um, these are really warm, holy cow. So what you're gonna do is just let them cool for a few minutes. Um, if you wanna sample one, then I would recommend them cooling just for a little bit because the jam is super hot in them but I have some on the bottom that have already cooled. So let me put this back here on the oven and I'm gonna break one open. Let's see, let's take a cooler one. Here we go. These are just so delicious. And look at the jam in the middle. It's just enough to add a little bit of flavor to those cookies and not so much that it gushes out over the side. So I hope you like this recipe. It's phenomenal. It just, if you want to sprinkle a little sugar on the top or even um, do colored, like some colored food coloring in some sugar, just to kind of do like pastel pinks and blues and maybe some greens for Easter, totally go for it. Kind of dress it up a little bit. But these are great. The kids are going to love them. You're going to love them. Everybody's going to love them. So anything you do, don't forget, make it with love. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like it, share it, and subscribe it. And tune in next time. We've got some more goodies coming for you. Have a great day, everybody.